This is a series of talks that I will give online for many months already. And this coincided with our retreat. And today I want to continue my talk. Theme. The theme was the 37 factors of enlightenment. 37 factors are divided into seven groups. The first group is my four foundations of mindfulness. Second is those clouded for effort. Third is the, the four bases of accomplishment. And fourth is five faculties, the spiritual faculties. Fifth group is five spiritual powers. Sixth is seven factors of enlightenment. Seventh is the noble eightfold path. This is only the thirty-seven factors of enlightenment. I have been giving talks on the first group, four foundations of mind. Four foundations of mindfulness is divided into six subdivisions. First is mindfulness of breathing. Second is mindfulness of the posture. Third, mindfulness of pure comprehension. Fourth is mindfulness of first two parts of the body. Fifth is mindfulness of breath. Sixth is the nine stages of Chana Yoga meditation. Out of these six categories that I have been working on, I have given talks on mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of uh, Postures, mindfulness of clear comprehension, mindfulness of mindfulness of four elements, mindfulness of meditation. Today I was uh, supposed to give the talk on the feelings. Second step for the four foundations of mind. Four foundations of mindfulness is mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of the feeling, mindfulness of the mind, mental state, and mindfulness of the Dharma phenomenon. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> 
mindfulness of breathing is also an extremely important aspect of our meditation. Some meditators focus the mind only on breathing. That also is a good subject. Feeling does not arise automatically, but there is the good background of the feeling. Feelings generally is always there. There is no moment in our life that we don't have feelings. Feeling, some people call it feeling, and it divides into two as feeling and sensation. But in the Buddha speaking, he used only one word that is Vedana. And that divides into various categories. Now, this Vedana or the feeling has its base on contact. Without contact, no feeling can arise. We have eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, and mind contact. These senses, what we, these are called senses, these senses are always open to the environment. So eyes open to the visual objects, ears sound, nose smell, tongue taste, the body environment, and anything, any object, and mind is mind objects. As soon as these six internal senses come in contact with external sensory stimuli, sensory objects, consciousness arises. Combination of these three is called contact. What are the three? Senses, sensory objects, consciousness. Combination of these is called Contact. Pinna Sangha. Immediately we feel, as long as we have consciousness, we feel. So the Therefore, contact is extremely important. There are two kinds of contacts. One is called designation, designation contact. Other is called impingement contact. In Pali, Adivajana Sampasa, and Patibha Sampasa. Uh, one uh, designation contact <coughs> means our senses come in contact with sensory objects, the message goes to the brain. Immediately that, after that, impingement takes place in the mind. The message impinges in the mind. And therefore the senses are extremely important for impingement contact. 
and therefore these two types of contact is necessary for the feeling and this is called touch touch uh, touch is fundamental aspect of social interaction which is fundamental to human needs social touch harms and uh, calms the, the the recipients of the touch during stressful experience touch can produce activation in the in threat and threat related regions of the brain when you are in fear if someone very lovely way touches your skin your body you feel secure safe and touch can infl influence the activation in their stress pathway in the sensory system in your nervous system it reduces levels of the stress hormones and touch has been found to stimulate the release of oxytocin uh, that is uh, neuropeptide produced in the hypothalamus and therefore touch is extremely important any kind of touch creates feel so depending on touch is uh, our feeling we can categorize the feeling and also when one is deprived of touch that would be very painful for instance in order to punish criminals they put in maximum security jail so that they will not have contact with the rest of the world and that makes them very very painful that is a punishment so let us focus more on the feeling in our meditation we learn various types of feelings and we recognize these feelings exactly as 
ए आर फॉर इंस्टेंस प्लेसेंट पी ने वी मस्ट रिकग्नाइज एज प्लेसेंट पी ने प्लेसेंट पी ने has underlying tendency of desire greed we like present feeling and this likeness of the present feeling is our greed so we want more and more of present feeling and there go present feeling has underlying tendency of greed unpleasant feeling when arises we recognize it as unpleasant feeling and unpleasant feeling has underlying tendency of aversion dislike resentment and neutral feeling has the underlying tendency of confusion moha because a neutral feeling is so nebulous unclear one would even not know what neutral feeling is most people think that there are only two kinds of feeling pleasant feeling and unpleasant feeling but in between pleasant feeling and unpleasant feeling there is another feeling called neutral feeling buddhas buddhas understanding of feeling is so sharp and clear so profound and deep that he was able to identify these three feelings separately pleasant feeling unpleasant feeling and neutral feeling in order to understand this there is an example a standard example example is suppose a hunter chase after a deer and he follows deer's footprints and then he comes comes across a rock large rock up to the rock up to the beginning at up to the edge of the rock hunter sees the footprints of the deer then he cannot find after that he cannot find the footprints of the deer then he goes over the rock and found the footprints again then he decides concludes that deer must have crossed this rock that means he inferentially understand that there is there are footprints of the deer on the rock similarly when you have pleasant feeling when the pleasant feeling ends neutral feeling begins when a neutral feeling ends unpleasant feeling arises when unpleasant feeling ends neutral feeling arises when the neutral feeling ends 
pleasant feeling arises. See, it is so sharp in the Buddha's explanation of the feeling. So, that is called neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling. Adukha masukha vedana. It is not called upekha vedana. We will dis explain this later on. Or oh, right now, I think it is better to explain it right now instead of postponing it. Upekha vedana is. Uh, more refined state of feeling. For instance, when you meditate, as you are doing, you attain stages called jhanas. Jhanas. First, second, third, fourth jhanas. And after that, uh, uh, there is another category of jhanas. In text, they are not called jhanas. They are called ayatanas. They are called akasanancha ayatana, vijnanancha ayatana, and so forth. Basis. Basis of equanimity. And there are, in, in those categories, they, 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 get, they are divided into two categories, material and immaterial. In, in material jhanas, you find the word of upekha, equanimity. From the third jhana onward, we find the word equanimity. There is much more subtle and refined than ordinary feelings. That is why it is called equanimous state and below that is called neither painful nor pleasant feeling. Neither pleasant no painful, or we may say neutral feeling, neutral feeling. So, then these feelings are again subdivided as worldly pleasant feeling, Worldly painful feeling, worldly neutral feeling. Pali word is Sam is a Sukha, Sam is a Dukha, Sam is a Adukha Masukha. Worldly pleasant feeling. What is worldly pleasant feeling? Worldly pleasant feeling is the feeling related to our greed, hatred, and delusion. For instance, you remember something very, very pleasant, pleasant experience, meeting with a person, living with a love, lovely person, doing something very pleasing, you remember that. When you remember such an experience, such an experience, you have pleasant worldly feeling. Then,
very unpleasant feeling is if you remember seeing someone you don't like, living with such a person you don't like, working in a place that you don't like, or some kind of traumatic experience, you have unpleasant feeling. That is called worldly unpleasant feeling. Or now, this moment, you encounter a person or meet a person you like, then that feeling is called pleasant uh, feeling that you experience from your present experience. That is worldly pleasant feeling. Or you may plan to have something very pleasant, you like very much, then there arises the pleasantness in your mind with regard to the future pondering. That is worldly pleasant feeling. So in the past, present and future, if you experience something that you like, that experience is called pleasant, worldly pleasant feeling. And all oh, worldly unpleasant feeling. Similarly, if you tried very, very hard to gain something, you did not get it. You tried very hard, you don't get it. You gave up. At that time, you will have uh, worldly, neither present nor unpleasant feeling. That is like uh, sour grape. Sour grape experience. Oh, you grape, you went to eat it. Who cares? I don't eat. That kind of feeling is called neither pleasant nor unpleasant worldly feeling. Same thing in the present and future. Now then, what is unworldly pleasant feeling? That is what we want to cultivate. Unworldly pleasant feeling does not have underlying tendency of greed. Does not have underlying tendency of greed. Unworldly, unpleasant feeling does not have underlying tendency of aversion. Unworldly neutral feeling, as we said, upekha, equanimous feeling, does not have underlying tendency of confusion. Now, what are these three types of feelings? This is very, very important to remember. Other feelings, of course, everybody has. There's no big deal in that. But this unworldly, pleasant feeling, what is that? When you meditate, let me give you another example. It's out of meditation, then we, I come to meditation later. Suppose you give something to someone without expecting anything in return. Give something to someone, you help someone, do some service to somebody without expecting anything in return, not even a thank. That time you have unworldly pleasant feeling. Why is that? Because there is no desire in that action. You enjoy doing it by just doing it. Suppose you see a 
person in situation suffering you don't know the person you will never expect to see the person again it is that person is total totally stranger you just happen to see the person suffering and you immediately rush to help that person and after helping you go on your way you never expect anything from that person that is unworldly present feeling unworldly on the other level the still higher level of unworldly present feeling is you meditate you meditate do real meditation not superficial meditation deep meditation when you see everything is impermanent everything is impermanent every impermanent thing thing is unsatisfactory every impermanent unsatisfactory thing does not have any permanent self we call it anicca dukkha anatta in pali so we see these three universal characteristic of everything everything means everything in you everything in your body your feelings your perception your thoughts and your consciousness these are everything you have nothing else friends your computer your car your house your you know property bank account your husband your wife not belong to you they don't belong to you even this body does not belong to us we just borrow it and use it and leave it is just temporary resting place so you see this very very clearly and then you will have very great pleasure you are very happy because you see it exactly as it is friends seeing the truth as it is is the greatest pleasure seeing the truth is the greatest pleasure suppose i think you are scientist you will learn computer science and uh, chemistry biology physics all kind of aspect of science all kind of science and you are working with the great formula trying to solve a problem say for instance we have the corona virus and you want to do discover a vaccine you run all kind of test do all kind of experiments and finally you find the correct vaccine you say oh, this is wonderful how is that you saw the truth you try to work a mathematical problem and you follow the steps and you get the correct answer you are very happy 
why you saw the truth. Seeing the truth makes you happy. There is no underlying tendency. You just want to see the truth. That is called unworldly pleasant feeling. Unworldly pleasant feeling. feeling. Then what is unworldly, unpleasant feeling? Unworldly pleasant feeling we can understand. What is unworldly, unpleasant feeling? Unworldly, unpleasant feeling is you see everything as they are. As I mentioned, your body feeling and so forth, you see them impermanent, unsatisfactory, selfless. But you have not attained enlightenment. You say them clearly, but you feel as if you are in the same place. You have not gained any stage of enlightenment. But other people, you have heard so and so attained state of extreme entry, so and so attained once eternal state, so and so attained never eternal state, so and so attained full around you, but you have not attained it. Then you are disappointed. Then you are disappointed. That is called unworldly, unpleasant feeling. And still you don't have aversion or anger. You simply are disappointed that you have not attained that state. Instead of getting, ever, getting upset, disappointed, from that point on, that unpleasant, uh, unworthy, unpleasant feeling is a good thing. Why is that? That encourages you to do more practice. <laughs> that arouses your spiritual urgency. The spiritual urgency. The spiritual urgency is called in Pali, Dhamma Sangvega. Dhamma Sangvega. Vega means speed. In Pali, Vega means speed. Sangvega means additional speed. So you have seen the Dhamma and you want to accelerate your speed. Go a little faster, don't get ticket. You see, you feel, I must be more vigilant, work hard. So, that is a spiritual, unworldly, unpleasant feeling. Then what is spiritually uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling or spiritually equanimous feeling? What is spiritual equanimous feeling? Equanimous feeling is it's a very, very high level of feeling. That is now, past, future. In all three times, past, present and future, everything in the whole universe, we are talking about uh, a miniature universe, microcosmic universe, not macrocosmic, microcosmic universe. That is us. <laughs> we, we are the universe. Everything, every tiny little cell, every iota, every uh, atom, molecule, Everything is constantly changing. That is true, scientifically true. Everything is constantly changing. 
and you see this all the time, then there is no nothing in the universe to get excited. Nothing excites you. Because mind is so stable, so stable. That is the state of mind Buddha maintained all the time. You will be able to sustain that state of mind when you attain that state. Your mind will remain very calm and relaxed, peaceful all the time. Why? You know, sometimes people say, I remember uh, there is a uh, Buddha statue in Sri Lanka. His, his hands are like this and then like this. And somebody interpreted that posture as para dukkha dukkita mudra. Suffering along with the suffering of the world. You suffer along with others who suffer. Or you suffer with the other others suffering. Buddha did not have that. Buddha never suffered because we suffer. Then he is not a Buddha. I give you a very simple example. Suppose you are a nurse in a hospital. Somebody comes with a very, very serious sickness, COVID or accident or bleeding. And if the nurse becomes nervous and begin to suffer with the patient, she cannot help the patient. She has to remain very calm, relaxed, steady, mindful to help the person. This is a mundane example. Buddha is the one who, who was there to help everybody. If he were to suffer with others suffering, always he would be in tears. <laughs> he could not help people. So one who realized the truth has attained the final attainment, knows everything, everything, and remains very calm, relaxed. You know, like parents, when children have a little cut and cry and cry, Parents don't cry, parents take the child to the lap and, uh, you know, with the, uh, suck the finger. Oh, good little mannequin and go to the child and calm down the child. Parents don't cry like the child. Similarly, when you attain such a higher stage, or in your spiritual practice, you remain very, very calm, steady, peaceful, and equanimous and balanced state in your mind. So, then, uh, these are the feelings that we have in the Buddha's teaching. And we must <coughs> focus on these feelings. Some are physical, some are mental. Mental feelings are called uh, somanasa. Physical feelings are called dukkha or domanasa. I mean, mental pleasant feeling called somanasa. Uh, physical uh, pleasant feeling is called uh, the 
against the super. So, recognizing the type of the type and type of feeling, whether they are pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, is very important for us to know that all these feelings <coughs> without reacting, emotional, without emotional reaction, that is the that is the state you have to maintain. No emotional reaction. So one day, a man called Nakula Pita, he was uh, almost uh, 80 years old, he went to see the Buddha and said, Vedra Pasha, I'm 80 years old, my every joint in my body is aching, I'm shaking, I'm weak, uh, so I feel very sick. The Buddha said, that is so, Nakula Pita, that is so. If anybody were to think that the person is uh, healthy even for one second, that is nothing but foolishness. Because something is always going on in our body or mind some kind of unpleasant feeling. So we have to learn to deal with these feelings as they are. So the past, present, future, internal, external, far or near, all feelings are impermanent, unsatisfactory, without self, Dependently arising, dependently arising, and therefore they are not mine, I am not them, they are not myself. That is how we have to use these feelings, and therefore we understand we have feelings all the time. Buddha gave a very beautiful simile. Uh, the simile is uh, like a cow who's, who is skinned. The skin is removed. May not be the whole skin or the body. Maybe, you know, certain part of the body, skin is removed. And then when this cow is exposed to the air, every time wind blows, the cow feels the pain. If the cow stands against a tree, insects on the tree will come and sit on the wound, on the, on the area where there is no skin, cow feels. Pain. If the cow goes to the water, and if there is a little, tiny little animals in the water, like tiny little fish or uh, another insect or water, touch the skin, he feels, she feels. The feeling is like that. Always there is some kind of feeling. We know that you feel something now, the air you feel temperature you feel, and uh, moisture you feel, uh, heat you feel, all the time we feel. And therefore, it is very easy for us to use the feeling as a part of our meditation, because what we feel this moment does not remain the same all the time. It changes whether it is physical or mental, it changes. And therefore, <clears throat> the feeling is called the factor that everything converge. Everything converge. Because, because depending on feeling, uh, 
we have uh, craving because of feeling or uh, desire arises because of feeling and therefore when we focus our mind on feeling we can stay with that feeling and see how the feeling changes and how we react if we are not mindful if we are not mindful of impermanence we react to feelings emotionally therefore we must learn how to use feeling without uh, uh, reacting emotionally i think friend this much may be enough as uh, talk uh, and i hope you continue your practice uh, i think uh, it is time for us to stop and uh, i hope uh, you got certain information and material to remember and uh, use for your meditation practice thank you Hello everyone in Zoom session. We have an announcement for you all. Uh, these days we have a retreat. So every day, morning and evening, we do have Dhamma discussions and Dhamma talks. So you all are welcome to participate all our Dhamma talks and Dhamma discussions. So normally we start at 9 a.m. in the morning, 9 a.m. to 40 would be the morning talks in the evening you can participate it at three o'clock and three to four and there is another one question and answer session starting at uh, uh, 4 15 so all these are on zoom you all can use same zoom link to participate in all these events thank you very much <laughs>